my name is Arielle Scarcella and this is my Draw My Life video. It all started with baby Arielle. I had no hair and I looked like a total boy. Smashing. My grandma always tells the story of how my parents brought me in the back door and she saw me for the first time. She's born a day after me so it was a nice birthday present for her. I was a smart ass kid. I walked around my crib at about 5 months old and started talking full words and sentences at 9. And I never stopped. When I turned three, my mom popped out my brother. He has red hair and freckles. We look nothing alike. My dad always used to joke and say he was the mailman's kid. My dad was a mailman. I started preschool at four years old, and yes, I was a Catholic schoolgirl. I had the skirt and the tie and everything. I used to get into so much trouble. I remember I would get bored and start reading my book or talk to the person next to me, but generally speaking, I was a very good kid. I remember having to make up things I did wrong just to have something to confess at confession. I was bullied on and off for a few years in school. All the girls wanted to do gymnastics, but not me. I wanted to throw dodgeballs at the boys, and I did. And I liked it. A lot. Luckily when I was growing up, I had both sets of grandparents to hang with. I always used to say that one grandma was an inside grandma and the other grandma was an outside one. With my mom's mom, we would go to the park and she'd bring a bucket and fill it with water and then we would pour it down the metal slide and it would be like the water slide and I would fly down it really super quick. My dad's mom would hand make all of my Halloween costumes. We loved sitting on the porch and watching the birds go by. I remember one of my favorite things to do was we would play the guess the color game while we watched the cars come down the road. I knew from an early age that I wanted to help others and I always loved art. My parents were very creative with my brother and I. We'd have fun by banging on pots and pans, playing hide and seek in the cabinets and they loved taking us to the zoo in the aquarium. I used to draw on my walls with blue and purple crayons and I was such a sleep talker. I also was pretty prone to night terrors. I would wake up from the nightmare but still be visually seeing things happening in front of my face. It was pretty scary. As I got older I turned to sports. My dad was the coach of most of my teams and let it be known that there was no nepotism involved. Junior high was the first time I ever had class with black kids. I know that sounds so weird but Catholic school had me so secluded. I remember failing my first math test with a 49. Turns out private school is usually not worth the money. I got my first boyfriend in the seventh grade and he had asked me out with a Pokemon card. Luckily for him, it was my favorite Pokemon. He'd walk me to my grandma's house every day after school and I dreaded having to kiss him on the lips. High school was much better for me. Everybody knew who I was. I was all over the place. I played basketball, softball, bowling, and I even helped the cheerleaders with their homecoming banners. By the time I was 16, I knew I wanted to go to art college, so I started taking art very seriously and took up oil painting class. My teacher's name was Rudy, and every Saturday from 3 to 6, I'd sit and paint in his studio with him and a few others, and we would listen to the Rat Pack and Frank Sinatra and all the other cool people from the 1940s. Two years later, I remember sitting on my floor in my room one day, and my mom came in with my acceptance letter. She had opened it for me and yelled, You got it, surprise! I sat there calmly and said, yep, college was really rough, especially since I was finally ready to come out of the closet. I was about 19, home alone, and I remember crying to myself in the bathroom mirror when I finally felt a release of almost a fog. I finally had seen myself for what I was, gay. I remember making some friends on MySpace who helped me through the process. Boy, do I wish I had YouTube like you guys do. It would have been much easier for me. I had my first girlfriend at 19 and soon to follow was my first pride parade. I remember feeling an overwhelming sense of love and accomplishment. All the people around me were just like me and somehow they were happy and proud. I stayed with my first girlfriend for a little over two and a half years and she was incredibly abusive towards me. I got very very sick. I continued through to my college graduation and I finally broke up with her a few months after getting my first full time job. I was still super sick so I called out of work or showed up late quite often and wound up getting fired. I then knew I had to take some time off for myself to heal. I was bored at home one day over the summer of 2009 and decided to make a funny video response to one of my favorite YouTubers. I made lots of friends on YouTube right away and continued to post and learned very quickly that what I had to say and how I felt was helping thousands of people all over the world. In 2010, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. He had it twice as a teenager, so this time we were pretty sure that it was going to be fatal. 
I remember catching him in my arms when he fell as the doctor told him the test results over the phone. He tried chemo just to please me, even though my whole family knew it wasn't going to work. He died that April, just six months after. Just before he died, I had shared with him the idea of an organization that helps kids express themselves in a creative, healthy way. He absolutely loved it. I gave myself six months to mourn before I launched Project Toasty. I finally had figured out how to be creative and to help people together at the same time. I continued to heal and got healthier and healthier as time went on. This past month, I finally began to travel and meet all of you guys at Playlist Live and in Houston, and my life just keeps getting better and better. So thank you for helping me realize what I meant to do, and thank you for being here for me when even I need to express myself as I did today. I'll see you guys next Sunday.